Hello everyone and welcome to another 1 liter PVMP video. Today I'm going to be showing you 1v1s versus a sword and board guardian. And I'm not using my rank 10 war leader. No, today I have another war leader entirely. He is still on the Landerval server, but he is only rank 3. Uh, this is the war leader that I created for the Fellowship of the Creeps, which was, I was invited to by Endang. Which uh, you can see that right here. I'm going to figure out which one of the eight buttons YouTube gives you to actually let you uh, link to other channels and videos and playlists and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, to be able to have this new war leader on the same server as my rank 10, I had two options. I could delete my rank 10, which was not going to happen, or I could make a new account. And so I went with making a new account. So this guy is on a free to play account. He does not have access to all his trait slots. But uh, he doesn't even have all his traits, so not as much of an issue. Now, uh, these whole, uh, this ra these few couple rounds of 1v1s were all spawned by a conversation in GLFF where uh, some people were debating back and forth, and somebody was saying sword and board guardians were useless, and this guy was defending it. And I jumped in and I had comments a couple times and stuff. I made a, the comment that I always laugh at people who say sword and board guardians are useless because my war leader does just as much damage as a sword and board guardian. And that's in Brawler's stance, typically. And I found that that has remained relatively true throughout every expansion that I've played in. I did not play a war leader in Shadows of Angmar. I suspect it was still very close there. Shadows of Angmar had other issues and stuff. Moria, Mirkwood, Isengard, Rohan. I've found that it stays very much the same level as far as a well-built sword and board guardian and a, a decent war leader, I'll, but I'll get to talking a little bit about that later. Anyway, uh, what he was talking about though was that he had uh, some fun tactics for 1v1s, which uh, Sword and Board Guardian, most people do not realize this, Sword and Board Guardian is very viable for 1 versus 1 in PvP. It suffers from many of the same problems that a war leader suffers from, where you can't keep people from running away from you, you don't kill them very fast. But if you're built correctly, if you've managed to get the right armor set bonuses, uh, you've got proper incoming heal rating, then your catch of breath heals you for quite a bit, and that keeps you sustainable and keeps you alive. It allows you to outlast your opponents. And what uh, Rill, who is our opponent, was talking about was that he actually outlasts his opponent's power pool, which uh, I talked about in the last two videos that I put up, and he beats them because they run out of power. And then he said that he could do that with anyone who was... A, approximately the same rank or lower than him, uh, at which point I asked him what rank he was, and he said 6, and I said, okay, I'll bring out the rank 3, uh, that's close enough. And then the guy from earlier, who disagreed strongly with me about um, my statement about Guardian War Leader DPS, and started saying nonsense like, a rank 11 War Leader can hit a 6k hit and stuff like that, uh, then he was all, oh, you've only got a rank 3 War Leader, no wonder you said that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, my initial reply to him was not as good as it should have been. Uh, I first said, no, I also have a rank 10, which then prompted the response of, oh, it's Dana, which uh, I had to laugh at. But no, I did follow it up by doing a short build up before I finally said the, the name of my other character. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't have been quite that mean to the poor fellow. Anyway, uh, the last thing to say before we get started is that I'm missing footage from the start of this video. After I had recorded the audio commentary to so the last two videos that I put up, and but before I recorded the commentary for this, after I had actually recorded the footage for this, I was messing around with the files and uh, trying to figure out all the video files I had on hand right then, how much space they were taking up on my drive because it was getting kind of full, and moving them around trying to figure out how to, how to do that, I forgot I could just select them all, hold the mouse pointer over one file and it would tell me the size of all of them together. I somehow managed to have a bunch of them vanish on me and disappear off the drive, which I'm kicking myself over. <sighs> Unfortunately, that meant that I lost one clip from video 51, one clip from 52, and I lost the very first clip from this one, as well as some other stuff, like I had a fight between my Reaver and a Champion, and I had some raid footage and stuff. The stuff that wasn't in the video I'm not too worried about for the most part. I, I wish I had the Reaver-Champ fight, but oh well. But I'm you know, really I'm not happy about having to put footage up with that's missing sections. I really don't like that. Fortunately, this is only the second time I've ever lost footage like that because of files getting corrupted or lost. It doesn't happen too often. It does happen. But I'll do my best to prevent it in the future. <laughs> and hopefully the only times we'll see me miss missing footage will be for those times when I hit record a little bit late or I don't have fraps turned on and turn it on partway through. Anyway, uh, 
here we go. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we've been going for quite a while. Um, I've got two power potions right now, and I started out with seven when we started this fight. So we have missed approximately... I want to say 12 to 11 minutes, somewhere around there, because I don't hit a potion immediately into the fight. It takes about a minute to two minutes before I hit that first potion, and then two minute cooldown. So we're somewhere around there. Uh, actually, I've got a, about 45, minute, 40, minute 30 seconds already gone from the cooldown, so uh, some, something like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the fight has kind of stabilized. Uh, we did. I was a bit more aggressive earlier on, but uh, what I'm doing mostly is I'm trying to manage my power. Uh, I'm doing a good job of healing up and staying alive, and then I'm trying to attack him from behind. I turn off my auto attacks when I'm not actually facing his back so that I don't give him his block and parry responses. And the reason I'm trying to do that is because I want to, one, deny him his uh, ability to restore power, but more importantly, deny him his ability to restore morale, uh, which if he doesn't get his catch of breath, which uh, his, is the Guardian's self-heal, which they get from a block response, or in the new overpower they can get from a parry response, then he can't heal up and I have the potential to kill him. Now, this is working alright for the moment, the only thing is it really slows down and hampers your damage output. Uh, you can see just how slow everything is, because those auto attacks aren't turned on except for a little bit of time, then I turn them right off again. It does hinder things a lot, and yeah, I'm slowly whittling down his, his morale bar, but it is going so incredibly slow. And also, when he just a while ago, he was in uh, Overpower. Overpower has some serious mitigation issues, and when in Overpower stance, you don't get as much morale back from Catch a Breath, so I probably should have gone ahead and left auto attacks on and just attacked more aggressively while he was in Overpower stance, try to do more damage and get him to f swap over to a, a different stance entirely. Oh well, I didn't. And now he's gone into Guardian's Defense, so uh, that's how that is. And uh, he just turned on Pledge, so I should... Yep, there we go. Turn that off. Uh, that's another thing that you want to do in Guardian Fights always, is watch for that Pledge animation. It's the white starburst over their head. Uh, if you play a Guardian or play with Guardians a lot, you will recognize it. But uh, that is, <laughs> is one to watch out for. It only lasts for about 15 seconds, if I remember correctly. And once it's gone, that, then you go ahead and attack. But while it is up, turn off your auto attacks. All you're going to do is feed him block and parry responses, really. And uh, you, the only time to attack them when they have pledge on is if you're standing directly behind the Guardian and they're facing somebody else and not going to turn around, go ahead and attack them. You've got a 50-50 chance of getting through because they've got 50% evasion rating. That's the only time to attack them when they've got Pledge turned on. And uh, there I'm opening my bags. I still don't know why. But I've used up my last power potion, so I'm going to have to be even more conservative so I don't run out of power here. And uh, that's just going to slow things down even further. And uh, his morale has gone up, so I'm not being very successful with my tactics. And uh, we're actually kind of stalling and drawing here at this particular moment of time. Uh, still though, uh, you've seen the trait setup that I have on this war leader. Uh, you know how just how little he has in terms of effective tools. You look at how empty his bar is compared to my rank 10, and it's not like monster bars get really full up with tons and tons of skills. <laughs> and even this is sparse compared to that. It's just uh, very interesting to, to have to play with such a smaller skill set and not uh, just just not have all this power and stuff that I usually do. I mean, it's only 16,000 morale, whereas my rank 10 has about 26,000, 27 when he's got uh, defensive R up. It's just a uh, very different. Also, there is of course the audacity factor, which uh, this war leader has absolutely no audacity. I could have spent some points on audacity on him, uh, and actually the empowering trait I bought just before we started this fight. I logged on to, to come meet this guy, and I, I picked this location specifically because I hoped it would be out of the way, and been very successful so far. But uh, when I logged on him, he didn't have empowering. I checked my commendations, I realized I had 1,700, I picked up on empowering, I slotted it, and I thought about spending uh, some of my other 700. I decided against that. I just decided I'm a little bit late. I don't want to really do a major retreat or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and come out as is. 
Uh, the other thing is that for 500 commendations, there's not a whole lot I could buy. I could get Banner of Terror, but uh, it's only going to be usable out of combat, although it will be a two minute effect and very handy to have. Uh, in my earlier career with Ugmog, uh, Banner of Terror was very important in some matchups. Uh, particularly uh, the matchups that were more burst damage. Of course, that was back in Mirkwood. Things were a little bit different then, but uh, the champion fights were often decided by whether or not I got down Banner of Terror. Especially once <laughs> once I had it, uh, figured out a system for how to actually fight champions. Guardians were also very important to get Banner of Terror down for a long, long time because uh, Guardians always run in overpower stance, it seems. And with overpower, before Rohan, really, the defining characteristic about overpowered guardians was that they suffered from power issues, and that was how you beat them was you beat their power bar. And the Banner of Terror was just so good for beating the power bar because they had to come and just do a straight up attack. Um, they had, had to try to burst you down, so you get Banner of Terror down, you would stand underneath that thing, wipe out the regeneration, wipe, take a chunk out of their more power bar right at the beginning of the fight, and <laughs> then you would just heal up, let them attack, they they had, they would spend all their power very rapidly. They'd go through their cooldowns, you would ship away at their health bar at, at the same time with auto attacks and stuff, and then they would hit the bottom, uh, Banner Terror would still be up at that point in time, and then you would turn on Brawlers and just go at it. Uh, there was only ever one or two Guardians I ever fought that could actually stand up to that back in Mirkwood. Now, uh, the, the, the Guardian is just in such a weird place. I want to spend some time talking about them for a little while. Guardians, they never seem to, to realize that Sword and Board is a viable option. It, it always strikes me as very strange, just how much uh, Sword and Board is, I want to say vilified, actually in terms of a playstyle for the Etmores, when it does have a proper place, and not just for shield walling your healer. We called it a draw there, and uh, he actually retraits and comes back, uh, and that's after a trip to GLFF, talk it over a little bit. Uh, I did look at his traits, the one that changed, I think, was he slotted in reactive block this time, so I will be taking reflect damage every time he blocks an attack. And uh, for his trait setup, he actually has, let's see if I can remember this correctly, uh, he's got Warrior Fortitude, he's got uh, the the leader, the Defender of the Free trait for Improved Thrill of Danger, uh, Harasser, um, he's got Stoic for the uh, additional mitigation stuff, that's a, a Fighter of Shadow trait. I believe he's specced up so that he is three or four deep into Defender of the Free and uh, three deep into Fighter of Shadow. Uh, one of them's three, the other one's four. I noticed he did not really have m anything in the way of traits for overpower, maybe one. Which matches up with what he said about being a build to try to outlast his opponents. Uh, as you can see, I, for the start of this whole particular round, uh, I've already started off with trying to deny him getting his reactives and stuff. Uh, I'm going to decide to go against that whole plan very shortly, and I'm going to try to attack more aggressively, because I realize he's in overpower stance, and I should try to take advantage of the, the mitigation hit that he has. And uh, really, the mitigation hit, prior to that whole mechanic with Riders Rohan, uh, that was a big reason for why, a big part of why the Guardians are always in overpower stance was because the, there wasn't enough given up to go into overpower versus sword and board, particularly for, for raiding, especially for soloing and such. The only thing you gave up was holding a shield, and you gained decent damage for that, and you you had to deal with some higher power issues. They they didn't really care about that. Being able to do damage as king, and especially after uh, I want to say update three, when the when guardians and burglars got unmitigated bleeds back at, back in Mirkwood, the overpowered damage really just got so strong, such a great um, way to play that it wasn't effective to do anything else. It, it was too effective to be able to do that uh, to the point that reavers had no way to actually fight against a guardian back then and actually be successful, it just didn't work. Uh, then at the same time, they still had all their great defensive skills, they had the 
evade and parry rate boost from Pledge when they had a two-hand boost, which still made them completely immune to attacks from the front unless they were ranged attacks. Just, you know, great defensive skills. Uh, they got a two-minute charge with uh, 17 seconds when leg fully legacied at plus 50% movement speed, immune to slows and all that fun stuff. So just a great tool set and uh, no major survival down costs to that. Nowadays, they have uh, some survival penalties. Uh, their, the big cooldowns change their effects. Uh, the Guardian's Ward doesn't provide extra block and parry rating when you use that in overpower. It provides uh, offensive statistic boost. Pledge doesn't give you a, the avoidance smorgasbord that it gives you in regular play as a Guardian, but it makes it so that you get a, an offensive boost, stuff like that. It's just very, very different. And then on top of that, there's a big mitigation hit you get automatically for going into overpower, which is about 30% mitigations. Now, there's uh, some f finicky stuff with the math on that, where the mitigation boosts, well, the mitigations lost aren't actually 30% uh, of your total mitigations. It's, I think, 30% uh, of mitigations without armor bonuses and so something like that. Like, if you took off all of your character's gear, then you would see it drop by 30% or something like that. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Uh, just fit to keep weird things. It still is a significant loss in terms of defense. And that is why I should be attacking more aggressively. The other big thing is that overpower, they gained extra, a little bit of extra survivability by being able to do catch a breath off of a parry response which, you know, that's really good, but then at the same time, Catch a Breath turns from being a, a good morale heal in Overpower Stance to being a power restore, and then if you have traded Catch a Breath, then you also get a, a better morale heal and a bit more power restore. So, Catch a Breath kind of flips its role to being a power restore with a slight morale boost on the end, instead of a morale restore with, if traded, a slight power boost on the end. Uh, there I was just checking the outpost to see who had which outposts, and it's a 2-2 split, so no major advantages for either side there. I'm, he's run himself very low on power, so now is a really good time to actually get on the offensive. Um, I should go ahead and turn on my auto attacks here as soon as I realize it. Uh, he doesn't even have enough power right now to actually use Catch of Breath, so this is when I should go ahead and attack as uh, aggressively as I can. Uh, another thing to note is that he does not have deflected or parried blows in his build, which those allow you to regain power off of a block or a parry, uh, or even partial blocks and partial parries as a guardian, which can really do a lot for your power survivability and sustainability, um, especially if you want to be the outlasting your opponent's power bars and uh, trying a, a play more like this, which one versus one sword and board guardians just are great. Uh, it, it is a wonderful thing to see. I wish I saw more of it. I, I remember uh, there was one Guardian called Borfin back in Mirkwood who uh, he, he spent a long time trying to figure out how he was actually going to be able to beat me. And he tried the overpower stuff, it just didn't work, I was turtling up way too tight. And then he, he basically said, okay, overpower isn't working, the only other thing I can do is sword and board and try to combine that or do that straight. And he tried both of those, and he was trying various combinations of, of dropping in a sword and board at some point, and then be able to go back and overpower it, all that kind of thing, stuff to give him survivability and things. It was really, really interesting. I loved fighting Borfin because we were actually very evenly matched in many respects, where the fights would literally be decided if one person had food and the other person didn't. But if they didn't have that advantage, uh, we were very much at a stalemate level, with me having a slight advantage just because war leaders had better st survivability and sustainability, and Guardian's catch of breath didn't heal as well as it does now back then. Uh, also, morale pools were quite a bit lower, but, you know, aside from the, the sword and board, if, when he stayed in overpower, it basically, I was able to win any, time, any fight that went that way. But... Uh, he, what he found, though, and what I found as well, just fighting against him, was that sword and board worked very, very well. It didn't work against the war leader because war leaders are a sustainable class. They outlast you. Uh, there's very few classes... Actually, I would even venture to say no classes that play the outlast game and will beat a war leader at that. If, if you're trying to, to outlast the war leader's power pool, as you can see right here with the Guardian, 
it doesn't work. It, as long as you're disciplined as the war leader about your skill use and everything, you will be able to take control of it and your power bar will be higher. Now the other thing is that for the, these matches I actually visited the the that guy who sells stuff, uh, the quartermaster in Gramsci, and they took the rank requirements off all the potions so I went ahead and bought the best um, silver costing power potions I could, a full stack of them. So I've got uh, more power to play with because I get more from my potions and I'm not going to run out of them. Uh, this is actually uh, pretty nice. I, I'm getting more aggressive with this and and I, th I think what I'm trying to do, if I remember correctly, is I'm testing to see just uh, if a more aggressive uh, attack style with more movement staying on, on his back and everything is going to be effective in allowing me to do more damage and keep him down. But the main thing is stay on top of him more and get more auto attacks off is what I'm trying to do right now. And try to overwhelm his self healing with the by just staying on him and getting more attacks down. Uh, is where I'm trying to go with this. Uh, which, you know, that, that leads me to movement. Um, movement is really Rill's uh, greatest weakness from having fought him and, and re-watching these fights. It just is equally apparent. He needs to tighten up his movement and do better at keeping facing. Now, obviously with the Guardian, th there's a, a certain level where you want to say, okay, I need to stay in front of them so that they can continue to give me my responses so that I can get my, my skills off. Uh, there went Pledge once again. Uh, but at the same time, you also want to go ahead and move behind your opponent, take advantage of them not being able to have that, and you also want to predict when they're going to try to move behind you and stuff, which he's going to do later on, but what happens there, and I'll point out when it actually happens, is I realized that I've become predictable on how I'm moving, and I change it up, and I exploit that he know that he thinks I'm going to move one way, by fainting that way and then moving the other way, so now I'm behind him. And it worked actually really effectively. Yes, I, finally I'm being much more aggressive here, and this is actually working out really well. I, I'm doing a much better at taking out his morale. Uh, I'm doing a good job of staying behind him and moving a, behind him in a 180 degree arc, just trying to keep on that rear so that he can't get blocks and parries, and also trying to keep keep him from being able to easily turn around and stay with me by just keeping myself moving. The other great thing is he isn't overpowered right now, so I'm hitting him harder, which is just a great big benefit. The other thing is, even though it's power heavy, I'm trying to get him with Fracture because I'm hoping that I can catch him in that induction where he's trying to change out of overpower stance if I get lucky hasn't happened yet, actually he's staying in over power stance right now and trying to do more damage to me. So I think that where we could go with this is do less healing for myself, allow him to attack more and just try to make it a, a, a let us bring both bars further down, try to have him come further down just by attacking more. Um, get him so that he gets, get him feeling that he's closer to getting me killed so he gets more aggressive so he doesn't focus as much on healing and power management. That might be a, the way to go with this to try to beat a guardian who's trying to turtle up against you. Now of course with a full skill set on a higher ranked war leader, <laughs> another story entirely. If you've got in combat banner of terror, don't don't even waste time with some of this stuff. I mean, just keep deploying that banner and watch their power bar go down. It, it is, there's way more stuff that I have on my rank 10 war leader as far as just tricks uh, available that let me go through them. I've, I've got more attacks. I've got banners, all kinds of stuff. And uh, here comes Hith drop. Now, uh, unfortunately. Hithy is going to go ahead and kill him, and uh, I stop attacking because I realize, you know, it's not going to be very good sportsmanship for this. And you know, if Hithdrog can't manage it, if he's if he's going to beat Hithy, then Hithdrog can run away. He can stealth anything he wants to. Hithdrog's a, a great friend, good support, and uh, all kinds of fun. Uh, but at the same time, this is a great chance for me to see how things go when it's uh, a different class that he's trying to outlast. Just see how that works out for him. Because I, I want to see how Rilv actually does with this particular build. 
and shortly here I'm going to go ahead and go into first person camera mode and turn off my UI and just do some filming which uh, it's just going to be fun but it does mean we're not going to see status bars, we're not going to see morale bars or anything and the main reason I start doing that is just because it becomes very very apparent that Hifthrog um, being ranked 10 just has a major advantage on I should turn off... Uh, I don't think I turn off names uh, but anyway while this is going on um, on my uh, last two videos I put up uh, I was just reading the comments a little while ago and someone asked me to sing the la 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 which I put in a, a caption uh, which was basically me trying to write the lyrics for the troll la 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 song um, which was not actually the a troll la 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 song but just sounds kinda like it uh, so I'll go ahead and do that now because I said I would um, <laughs> so anyway uh, here we go la 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 Okay, that's over. Uh, if you notice right there, Hithdrog just hit rank 11. He went from lieutenant to commander, and it was right there captured on screen. Um, so, <laughs> even though it was a, a, a bummer that the fight got interrupted, I, mean, I got some more interesting footage than what you us usually see, and I captured Hithy going to rank 11, which I'm very happy with. Now, we, we do go ahead, and he comes back for another round. Uh, unfortunately, for this round, and actually, last round, I was actually feeling like I had him at a point where I might be able to push further and get him killed. Unfortunately, we're never going to find out how that would have gone, because very shortly in this round, I actually get called away. There's a microwave that has to be moved, and so I try to go AFK. Sadly, I don't have a banner to communicate with him, because I'm only rank 3 and all that stuff. So the best I can do is stop attacking, stop moving, do slash AFK, but it's in the player's choice what, what they want to do. And uh, he decides to stay on me. I go ahead and stop recording when that happens, but uh, he stays on me and he kills me. And honestly, I can't grudge him that, because the fight did get interrupted by Hithrog, and Hithrog did finish him off. And I got full credit for that because of some mechanics in the Etmores where th things don't time out. Now it's through that I'm turning off, trying to go AFK and all that. So recording's about over. So uh, one death, I can't grudge that whatsoever at all. But still, uh, very, very fun to, to get to talk to him about uh, some of the fights. I didn't get to talk to him after the last couple ones, but I'm hoping to manage to get in touch with him later on. And uh, it's just great to see a Sword and Board Guardian. They're, they're such a rare breed, but they are way more effective than most people give them credit for. Most people don't even try Sword and Board. Sword and Board can be effective. If you're in the raid, yeah, there, there's plenty of arguments about, oh, Sword and Board doesn't do DPS, blah, 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 blah. They don't hit as hard as other creeps. Yeah, they don't hit as hard as creeps. They hit just as hard as creeps do. Creeps make it work somehow. Now, obviously, the mechanics on the two classes are very different. They, they don't work the same way. But that doesn't mean that you still can't manage to make it a viable way to play and figure out how to make it work for your play style. I know I could go on for quite a bit talking about that whole train of thought stuff, but we've already <laughs> passed way over the half hour mark and stuff, but, um, so we're just going to go ahead and call it. That's all for this time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, liked getting to see a low ranked war leader. Uh, ju just to show you, you don't need the full skill set and stuff to be able to do the kind of stuff that you see on this channel. It People leave comments all the time talking about how they managed to pull stuff off with their low ranked, and now I'm showing you exactly how I do it with my own war, lo, new low ranked war leader. So uh, you will see more of him in the future, and I hope you enjoy seeing him. That's all for this time. Good luck and have fun out there. Ugmog is out.